Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Welcome to Main Street Vegan Academy Week. Every day we are going to feature one of the graduates from Main Street Vegan Academy, and I think all of them are actually going to be doing fabulous cooking for us. Today our guest is broadcasting live from Costa Rica, where she is going to make a delicious and healthy Costa Rican breakfast, which is includes waffles. But first, let's get to know her a little bit. Her name is Chris Day and welcome her to the show. It's very nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Well, it's my pleasure. You know, of course, one of the things we like to always ask our guests is their vegan journey, when they became vegan, why, what benefits they found from doing it. But for you, I've got to know what the heck you're doing in Costa Rica. I hear it's a beautiful place. And I know that there's a lot of vegans there and many of them have been on the show. Yes, yes. Um, we moved here in July of 2018. And um, basically, we moved from central New York. We were in Binghamton, New York. So lots of snow, long winters. And we just thought that was, that's enough. We moved to a beautiful climate. So um, yeah, we've been here since, the, uh, since July 2018. And uh, yes, you're right about a lot of vegans being here. I'm very fortunate to live in Nuevo Arenal, so we're on a lake, and uh, we have a huge vegan community here, believe it or not. So um, I started a Facebook group for the folks around the lake, and they're wonderful people. So it's a, it's a growing, growing segment of our population. Well, that is quite a switch from New York, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Did you attend Main Street Vegan Academy while you were living in New York? Because at one point, it was in person there. Yes. Yeah, we did it in, my husband and I both did it in November of 2014. And um, it was, yeah, we were about four and a half hours away from, from the city, but it was still, it was a great week. We had so much fun and learned amazing things and uh, got to eat in some terrific restaurants. And, and really it was, it was a terrific experience for us. Oh, that's fantastic. So your husband went through the program too. What, what did he become, if you will? Well, he just did it out of curiosity. He, uh, he and I went vegan right around the same time. And um, so, you know, he wanted to, to find out more about, especially the health act aspect of it. Um, and uh, he just really enjoyed it as well. So you guys weren't vegan at the time that you took the course? We were vegan for about a year at that point. And what made you decide to become vegan? I have an interesting story and I credit Victoria Moran for a lot of it, is that when, um, in 2013, I became very sick, just kind of unexplainable. I think it was adrenal fatigue brought in by stress, but the doctor looked at me and she said, you're going to go in bed for five days. You just need to rest. So I, I did that. I went to bed and I picked up Victoria's book, Main Street Vegan. And I had been pescatarian for several years. So I started reading it. You know, everybody says at one point or another, I could never go vegan. And I was that way too. And once I read it, I thought, I can do this. This is much easier than I really thought it was going to be. So I did it. I did not look back. Overnight, I just said, that's it. I'm, I'm going to go vegan. And about a month, well, a few months later, um, we, my husband and I went to the Albany Veg Fest and saw Colleen Patrick Gaudreau. And that was what convinced him to go vegan. Um, he says, it's just, it's a no brainer when you have it explained to you. So um, yeah, and it's just been fantastic. Uh, just being able to um, have my passion be what I do for a living, working with area restaurants and working with clients, uh, it's just been a, a fantastic experience. Wow. So when you thought you could never go vegan, what, what was the thought process then? Because you say a lot of people say that, which they do. What were you, were you afraid that you'd have to give something up? Yeah, nothing in particular. I just thought it was going to be very difficult to do. I thought, gosh, I don't know if there are a lot of options for me. I don't know how I'm going to change. Uh, you know, when I, I in, in being in business, you go to a lot of luncheons and things like that. Because I'm going to be able to navigate all that. Um, being pescatarian is super easy, super easy. But going vegan to me was like, oh, I don't know about that. But then I found out it really is easy um, if you just educate yourself, find, find your tribe, super important, find a community of vegans, and, um, and really it's, the rest kind of falls into place. 
Did you notice any difference in how you look, how you felt after going vegan? I did. I felt, uh, well, my cholesterol went way down. Um, my husband is off of a lot of his medications that he was on for many years and, um, and just felt more energetic. And, and also from an ethical standpoint, I felt like I was no longer contributing to the effects of climate change and the suffering of animals and so on. So um, from a spiritual perspective, I think that it was a big change for me too, a positive change. That's great. Well, thank you for doing that. And so uh, tell us about what you created out of going to Main Street Vegan Academy, because it sounds, or talk about the academy, because it sounds like maybe either you have a project or like you, you, you know what I'm trying to say, maybe I'm not phrasing it correctly, but it seems like people do something afterwards with their, uh, the knowledge. Yeah. That they're doing. I think, I think one of the biggest things that came out of that, not only was the knowledge that I got, but, but professionally, just knowing that I had this new tribe, this new set of people who were very uh, knowledgeable. And if I had any questions, I could, I could go to them. Um, all of the graduates are, are very helpful and supportive. Um, and so yeah, I decided I was going to do some coaching, but then I was also going to, once I got here in Costa Rica, I thought, okay, if I'm going to make changes here, I have to start with some of the restaurants and working with them to add vegan options to, um, to understand more about, okay, maybe you're not gonna go all vegan in your restaurant, but you're going to be able to um, add some, some options for people. Training the staff, making sure they understand, you know, okay, don't put honey in that dressing, honey is not vegan. Don't, you know, make sure you understand that cheese, you know, even though it's not meat, it is not vegan. So I think uh, that's been the most rewarding thing that's come out of this for me. Um, and I, you know, just like I said, this, this group of people that I met has been fantastic. Well, that's great. I can't wait to see what you're going to make. Is it very easy to get vegan food in Costa Rica? I imagine with all the fruit. Yeah, it is for certain things. Uh, nutritional yeast is a challenge. Um, it's very expensive. Um, and cashews, when I first moved here, I, I had no idea where to get raw cashews. And, uh, and I used to fill things in my suitcase. When I'd go to New York to visit a family, I would fill my suitcase up with things, drag it back to Costa Rica so I'd have it. But then um, after a while, it was like I started learning where to get this stuff. And now I don't have to do that when I go to the States. Maybe nutritional yeast, but otherwise I've been able to find everything. Um, and as far as, um, you know, if you're going to, you know, as we talk about the difference between whole food plant-based and vegan, lots of vegan options such as cheeses and, you know, follow your heart is huge here. Um, we have a distributor called Mundo Vegano, which is fantastic for finding uh, all, all sorts of follow your heart products and beyond products and things like that. So in the past four years, it's been a huge change for the better. That's great. And do they have vegan restaurants? Yes. Uh, a little bit hard to find, but in the bigger cities, uh, there's a loving hut in San Jose. Um, there's a wonderful place owned by a woman from Israel. Uh, she does incredible food uh, in San Ramon. Um, if you go to some of the beach areas, you'll find uh, Matthew Kenny has a new restaurant on the beach. Um, so yeah, they're, they're popping up. That's fantastic. So what are you going to make for us today, Chris? We're going to make Pura Vida oatmeal waffles. So this is a recipe that is adapted from a recipe I found online from a woman um, in Vancouver, Canada. And um, I, I will tell you right now, I know how healthy oatmeal is. I don't like oatmeal. I, do, I just don't like the texture, especially in the heat. I don't like to have something that's really hot. I mean, I know overnight oats. Nope, nope, nope. Not my thing. But this is like a new take on oatmeal. So the first thing you need to do, obviously, is get your oats. And you're going to make, so a lot of people think, oh, I need to buy oat flour because that's what the recipe calls for. But the easiest thing to do is just to make your own oat flour. And uh, it's super cheap, very easy to find here, and um, very easy to so we'll get our trusty Nutribullet out, make some oat flour. 
Just want to let you know you got a friend watching. Carolyn Timmons says, Oh, my, she's my yeah. bestie. <laughs> oh, nice. She says you've been an inspiration to all of us around oh. Lake Arenal. I hope I said that correctly. Mm-hmm. And it's nice to know that I, I, I always feel like I'm all alone in the world because I cannot stand oatmeal. I don't mind oats, but I, it's like the, <laughs> it's got the gluckiest texture and it's just, yeah. Ugh. And I, I, yeah. I use it all the time in baking, but it's nice to know that I have a, a twin here that I it's not just yes, me. I mean, I, I'm happy to know that I, I have a twin because I, I know how healthy it is. I know how good it is. I know how you can dress it up. But I just can't bring myself to eat it. Not all the time, maybe once in a while. But my my granddaughters, they will eat overnight oats for lunch. They love oatmeal. So God bless them. So I'm going to make some noise here. That's all there is for that. And I'm gonna, I did it separately in the Nutribullet because sometimes the oats get stuck in the blades of the, um, of the vitamins. So like that, a little bit more. Yeah, Carolyn, her husband came to my tofu class uh, a few weeks ago. He was, he's a great cook and he, uh, he was the only man who came to my class, but he really enjoyed it. He was a lot of fun to have. What does Pura Vida mean? It means, um, it means pure life translated, but when you live in Costa Rica, if you say to someone, como estas, they say, ah, pura vida. How, isn't this beautiful weather? Ah, pura vida. It's just a way of expressing how good something is, pure life. I love it. It's great. So what I always do with my extra oats, if I have any, is I always collect them in another jar so that next time I may not have to make them. I'll put this over here. So now we put two cups of oat flour in here. Now, we have lots of banana trees on our property. And so you, unfortunately- Does that mean you have free, free, free bananas? That, free bananas? Like free all the free time? Bananas. All the time. Let me show you. This was our latest harvest. So, <laughs> salmon with bananas here but it's great I mean it's wonderful so I'm not going to complain about it but um you know and everybody says freeze the bananas freeze the-. there's only so much freezer space you have so with this I'm going to um I'm going to use a cup of bananas um to make this so what I can do what I like to do with this is I measure I'll sometimes puree it measure it into two cups or into one cup and then freeze it that way. So when I want my waffles, I just take it out of the freezer. And these are little teeny bananas, you can see. Really delicious. Who's, who's, who's making all that noise? Well, he was supposed to be put away. I mean, in the, in the office with my husband. That's Finnegan, he's one of our five, five dogs. Okay. That's another thing when you come here, you generally adopt, well, Carolyn has five dogs also. So, so here we are, just mushed all these bananas into here. I'm gonna put them in here with a cup of plant milk. This is unsweetened almond milk. I'm gonna put in a, um, I guess some banana goo in here, um, a teaspoon of vanilla, a teaspoon of baking powder, and then we're going to whir that up. I'm going to get my waffle iron plugged in. You ever try vanilla powder? Yeah, it's hard to get here, though. I, there are certain things I see and I am so envious that, you know, people can just go to their, you know, either Amazon or Trader Joe's and just, um, just get vanilla or powder or paste or whatever. Um, vanilla is actually grown in Costa Rica. 
Um, but the funny thing is it's incredibly expensive here. So I think most of it's being exported. But yeah, it's a, it's a tropical plant. Yeah. It's relatively expensive everywhere though, second most expensive you're place right. in the world. You're right, you're right. Yeah. Okay. There's my lid. We don't want to do this without the lid. Okay, more noise. And sometimes it'll stick on the corner, so you want to make sure it's all, all the dry ingredients are getting incorporated. But that's all your ingredients, which is, it's economical, it's, um, you know, super easy to get. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna let that mixture sit for about five minutes. While in those five minutes, we're gonna make our compost. Hey, Chris, there's a question. Chris, there's a question. Um, I, I can't answer this because I don't, I'm not really good at substitutions because I know how hard it is to make a delicious recipe without sugar, oil, and salt. But uh, we have a question from Melinda. Is there a replacement for bananas? Uh -huh. No, I wouldn't say there's a replacement for bananas in this. Um, bananas act as uh, the, the thing that holds it together. Um, they replace the eggs, uh, they replace the oil. So, no, unfortunately. I know, I'm right with you. I am right with yeah. you there. Yeah, it's a shame. Um, so yeah, we're gonna let that sit for a little while. Well, bananas and so many vegan recipes, you know? Um, this way. So here is the recipe called for the compote basic recipe calls for two mangoes. Now, problem is this is a mango. And so it's <laughs> so huge difference in size. Uh, so, you know, you just want to kind of, like this to me is, is about a mango and a half, this big, this big stuff here. So what I've done here is I've already cut up my mangoes and I'm going to put them into the Nutribullet with two tablespoons of water. I'm going to kill him. By yeah. Doesn't he know <laughs> you're on, doesn't he know stuff. you're on Chef AJ Live? <laughs> I told him, he just didn't listen. Okay. Getting this out again. So you can use, excuse me one minute, can we take this? Hey guys, I'll be two o'clock on Robbie and Cyrus's page if you're not doing anything to be specific. Post it. Oh my God. Oh, okay. Oh, good that you guys are so far. Okay, we're back. Uh, Lisa wants to uh, know is there a brand of vanilla that sugar isn't added to? Oh gosh, you know, I don't usually look at that. I don't. Um, you know, this is just the McCormick that I use. This is the vanilla bean extract, uh, water and alcohol. And that's all there is here. So yeah. Oh my goodness. I should have sent them all to Carolyn's house and talk for a play date. <laughs> so one of the things I wanted to say is that you can use, you can use um, frozen mango if you want, thawed frozen mango, that's fine. Um, but, you know, of course, we're using fresh mango here because we have it so readily available.
It's like mango baby food. Okay, so we're gonna put this. Find my other spatula. We're just gonna put this into a bowl, and we're gonna add other ingredients. I did want to show you how to cut a mango, though. Let's do that. So um, we bought this mango cutter. I don't know if you've ever seen one of these. I bought this when we moved here, and it doesn't work. So save your money. <laughs> I don't know anyone who's had this work for them. So the best, the thing to remember is that a mango, this is what the seed looks like, the pit. So when you're looking at a mango, you're gonna have one side is going to be fatter than the other. And so the fatter side is where your pit's gonna be, the wide side. So you wanna cut it this way. You have this, then you can just make little marks. I got a little bit of a pit here. You can just make marks like this and then turn it inside out. And voila, you have your mango. Super easy. Now, what I usually do, because I don't like to waste, um, is that I, you know, not only do I scrape off these, these cubes, but I'll also scrape some of the meat of the mango, for, especially for a recipe like this, where you don't need to have full pieces. Um, but it, it's really easy to, to do a mango that way. And we have a, a man, and his wife who have um, a truck. And the truck has, um, it's just this huge truck that pulls up downtown and all he's doing is selling mangoes. And they are the best mangoes I've ever seen. I have never had anything like it in my life. So delicious. So we're really, really fortunate to have that. Where did you get that clever tool? I think I got it on Amazon. Yeah, it was one of those that came home from New York with me, but I wish it worked. But I think a lot of times the mango, well, like, first of all, the size of the mangoes are so different here. Um, and also the fact that it's really, um, if it's too soft, it doesn't, like I'm having a hard time getting through it right now. And a mango should be soft. It should be like a little bit, give a little bit when you squeeze it, you know that, right. So yeah, that was a disappointment. However, what was not a disappointment is, this is my, my pineapple tool. So pineapples, as you know, are not a lot of fun to, um, to core. So I'm gonna pull the core of this thing off here. And I don't know if you know this, but all you need to do is stick this in the ground and you'll get more pineapple. So it starts to root and then the little baby pineapple appears up here. It's really amazing. So best way to regrow fruit. So here's my, my uh, pineapple with the top cut off. And what you do here is you stick this in the center where the core is, press down, and start turning. This is the best investment. For. We've had this since we moved here and it's wonderful. And so there you go. Here's your pineapple, fresh pineapple. And what's really funny is I used to make, I used to do cooking classes for Airbnb experiences and we would do um, a pineapple upside down cake. And so of course you use fresh pineapple, but you, it called for like a half a cup of pineapple juice. You can't find unsweetened pineapple juice here. <laughs> so silly. So we would have to squeeze all of this to get all the juice out of it. And so here is what you would see, you know, your little, whoops, your little Del Monte or your Dole chunks of pineapple. I'm gonna put those right into the compote, right into the, what I made here with the mangoes. And then we're gonna save some to the top. Okay. This is fine. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna put into this compost is kaya. 
You like papaya, Chef AJ? Oh, I'm, I love papaya. Some people <laughs> don't, though. It's weird, isn't it? No, I don't. I don't. And my husband loves it. But for this, it's just so pretty. <laughs> I couldn't put it in here. I think it's going to be a nice addition. So papaya. Look at that, how gorgeous that is. So what we can do, cut off the long strips here. Our birds love this. We see the toucans and the oropendulas, all these beautiful, beautiful birds, and they love Aya, their favorite. So this I'm gonna just do like a small dice. You probably can't see it out. No, if you can even see it in here, but I'm going to do a small dice. We're going to put that on top of this too. And the papaya seeds are supposed to be really good for you too. Have you heard that? I heard that you can make a seasoning that tastes like black pepper out of them. I'm allergic to black pepper. I've never mm. tried it, but I hear that you can do that. Oh, that would be pretty cool. Okay, so we have this. Of course, you want to cut up the whole thing if you're making a whole batch of waffles. This recipe makes about four waffles, which is, you know, for my husband and I, it's, it's fine. That's all we need. Um, but the nice thing is that you can freeze them. So if you want to just have it on a Sunday morning, you take them out of the freezer, put them in the toaster oven, um, and just, you know, zap them until they're, they're nice and crispy and warm. But there, it's a great, it's a really delicious breakfast. Okay, so we have our compote started. The uh, waffle iron is ready. We're gonna take a half cup measure. Put on the hot waffle iron. Now our waffle iron is very well seasoned. So it shouldn't, <laughs> shouldn't stick, please don't stick. But the half, the half cup measurement is usually what um, is, makes a perfect waffle because it, um, it's not too big. If it's too big, then it ends up sticking. So hopefully we have good luck with that. Okay. So that usually just takes a couple of minutes. We're going to cut up some more banana too for the top. Bananas and bananas. Yum. Tell us about you your know, business. Right? I, I went on your website. It says vegan coaching, vegan catering, coming soon, vegan restaurant consulting. Tell us about what you do. Yeah. Um, so I've been doing, um, um, I've been doing a lot of, of uh, restaurant consulting lately. Um, just talking to the owners and the chefs of various restaurants to encourage them to add more vegan options. Um, it's been it's been really a good experience. And it's funny, you know, I'm I'm just started thinking about this. Four years ago when we moved here, there was nobody that really technically had any vegan options. You had your cheeseless pizza, you had your pasta with marinara, all these things that you know you can find really in any city. And we, we have about five thousand people living here in Nueva and right all. So um, but now I can think of five places off the top of my head in our little town of 5,000 people that have something signs out on the road to say vegan, vegan option, or um, a vegan menu on their you know main menu. I mean, the changes that have happened in four years have been just extraordinary. Um, it's really encouraging. And I think that also encourages other people, other restaurant owners to add additional options for their, for their restaurants. And and that's really just a good thing for everyone. That's great. Now we have thunder. <laughs> if we're really like, we'll have an earthquake while I'm on the air. <laughs> That'll be a first. Yeah. Okay. This is a tiny, tiny little waffle. Oh, somebody, um, Elodie says, what is the brand of your waffle maker? Oh my goodness. Um, let me see. It is an oyster. And it's, 
like it predates me. My husband and I have been married for eight years and he had this before. He was the waffle king. He loves making waffles. So, so here's our itty bitty little waffle. And we're gonna get a spoon. For this delicious compote. We're gonna put that on top. So, you know, there's no sugar. The only sugar you have in here is the natural sugar from, from the, uh, the fruit. Okay. So we have our, we're gonna put some pretty yellow pineapple on here. Put some bananas. And then this gorgeous papaya. Now, of course, you have to garnish. So we're going to take some coconut, put that on top. And then, now the, the rule, and I don't know if you know this, I learned this in one of my culinary courses. You never have a garnish on a plate that can't also be eaten. So, well, then why, they, they, why do they give that little paper thing with sushi? Oh, good point. Nobody told them that rule. Yeah. But I have, this is bigger than my waffle. This is a hibiscus flower. So we'll put one there. And these I got right off our, our property. Maybe one up here. So, so there you have it. Is there any way you could come a little closer to the camera to show how beautiful it is? Absolutely. And that was so delicious. That's my lunch. <laughs> That's going to be my lunch. So, yeah. yeah. It is really delicious. Um, and, you know, there's no need to add sugar to this because it's sweet enough with the fruit. And you don't even need maple syrup. When you make a compote like this, this is just a natural, natural syrup that's going to taste really delicious. So good for you, too. Yeah, absolutely. Do you ever batch cook waffles and freeze them? I do that because it just... Uh, you know, I should. I should because my freezer's full of bananas, though. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a really good idea. I love batch cooking. I do a lot of that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really smart because then whenever you want them, you can have, you can have your, your waffle. It doesn't have to be just a treat because this is super healthy. This is really good for you. And a way to get oatmeal in you without, you know, all yep. the sensory issues. <laughs> right, because then you don't have to keep firing up the waffle iron. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. And I, I just put it in the uh, in the air fryer. Do you have an air fryer or an instant pot living yes. in America? Oh my god! Oh, I bought it before we came here. This is one of the things that um, appliances are just not a really good thing to buy here. They're expensive because there's a lot of import taxes and. Um, and the stuff that, that most of the, the, the cheapest stuff comes from China and it doesn't last very long, um, unfortunately. But yeah, I bought a nice Phillips air fryer before I moved here. And oh my gosh, I love it. And we have, you know, French fries. I love, I love it for um, just heating up leftovers. You know, I have falafel, I throw it in there and five minutes later, it's delicious, um, you know, hot meal. But yeah, I don't know what I do without it. I love, I love all my gadgets. There's so many gadgets. And I want more. <laughs> I always want more. That's great. So tell us, take us through a day of for what do you eat for a day? People love that sure. answer. Yeah, yeah. Um, so for breakfast, um, so there's, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Clean Food Dirty Girl. I've heard um, of it, yeah. Oh my gosh, it's fantastic. All plant based, all whole foods, no oil, no refined sugars. All the recipes are just phenomenal. They have a baked oatmeal, be another idea, a baked oatmeal that I also put mango in. So that's what I'll, I'll make that and then cut it into slices and then eat that all week for breakfast. So amazing, so delicious. And then um, for, for, I'll usually need a snack around 10, 11 o'clock and I'll have some fruit. And then at lunchtime, um, often I will use one of the batch recipes from Clean Food Dirty Girl, either leftovers or um, one of my favorites is a, um, it's a white bean uh, salad. And it, it uses like tofu mayo and it's just so, so healthy and so delicious. It has curry in it, oh, it's, it's yummy. And then, um, and then for dinner, again, you know, it's usually a, one of the recipes that, that I use um, that I batched on Sunday. 
um, from Queen to a Dirty Girl, and and that could be anything from um, oh my gosh, a beet sandwich, a, a pastrami spiced beet sandwich, fantastic with it has sauerkraut on it, and oh, it's just amazing. And um, and then even uh, we'll do uh, oh I have I, have you ever heard of Brand New Vegan? He does yeah, a lot of oil. He's, he's going to be on the show, I think, in October. Great. Chuck, sure. Awesome. He's, his recipe for chicken fried tofu is to die for. So that's my husband's favorite. We'll have chicken fried tofu with this gravy that is oil free. Um, and then we have like green beans or, or broccoli on the side. And of course, mashed potatoes, because you can't have gravy without mashed so um, that's one of our favorite recipes. So it's some simple things like that. We are very, very fortunate here. When I first moved here, we could not get tofu. It was nowhere to be found. And I was lost because I love tofu. And then, um, then we had this uh, woman who's originally from Malaysia. She started coming to our farmer's market and she makes homemade tofu from soybeans that are organic, GMO free, um, he makes them the old fashioned way, which is with vinegar. So, you know, like the tofu, instead of using the nigari, she uses the um, vinegar to curdle it. And her tofu is the best I've ever had in my life. So I get two big blocks from her every, um, every other week and, and just enjoy it. Like once a week, I have my tofu. I'm very, very fortunate. Well, you had that beet pastrami. That is very intriguing. It's so good. That, I've never heard of that. That sounds amazing. Yeah, yeah. It's a, I really highly recommend them. And, I, you know, I don't, I don't work for them. I don't get anything for it. But I do, you know, some of the recipes are, um, have a lot of ingredients and they can be a little time consuming. But they're just, it's like magic. That's what they do with spices that they, you know, with no oil and no refined sugar. It's just really, um, a, a really wonderful way to eat. Well, that sounds amazing. Maybe she'd like to come on the show and make it. I've never, I've never met her. Oh yeah. Molly Patrick. You, I'll, I'll pass it along that uh, she should get in touch with you. Cause that is very, that is a new one. That is so intriguing. I love it. <laughs> Let's see. Do you, I bet, you know, it's the weather's probably pretty nice there most of the year, right? Yeah. Right now it's really hot. <laughs> it's really hot. It's our rainy season, which I love because I really love the rain and everything is just lush and green again and the waterfalls are gorgeous, you know. So um, this time of year is a great time to visit, even though it's rainy season. But we've been having just a couple of weeks of really hot weather. So um, it would be nice to, to have a pool right now. <laughs> we don't have air conditioning where we live. And I don't know very many people who do have it here because it's, it's always cool. There's always a breeze. But there are probably three or four days, maybe three or four weeks out of the year, I'd want to have an air conditioner. This <laughs> is one of them. <laughs> Do you get outside a lot? Do you exercise? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we go to, um, uh, we have a hike that we do in the morning, about two miles with our dogs. Um, it takes us up the road past the farm and really, you know, it's just a, it's just a dirt road and uh, it's really beautiful. We're able to see the volcanoes um, and yeah, it's just really, really amazing. Hmm. Maybe you could talk a little bit about your experience at Main Street Vegan Academy in case anyone here is interested in taking the course yes. that I believe starts in October. Yes, absolutely. I highly recommend it. Um, I mean, you know, I told you my story about how Victoria really gets a lot of credit for getting me to make the change over to vegan. And to meet her was an honor of a lifetime. She is a very gracious, very knowledgeable person and um and just to have her spend time uh, in collecting all these people martin rowe from lantern books and dale fields and um you know marty davy uh who's a nurse nutritionist i mean th that just is it, you don't ever get that all in one place sure you can watch a million youtube videos you can read a million books but you don't get it all in one place from these experts and that was the most valuable thing for us. Um, and I don't doubt for a minute that it's just as good with being virtual because I, I just know Victoria. She's a, she is a perfectionist and she is, um, her quality of the program is really important to her. 
So it was, it was just wonderful. And it was something that I, uh, I would recommend for anyone uh, who's considering even just to, you know, I don't, I just out their game to learn. Like my husband did. He just wanted to learn. He wanted to support me and he wanted to learn more about this lifestyle that we had chosen. And, um, you know, it's, it's learning from the experts is just priceless. That's great. Oh, here's a wonderful comment that is left about you. Let me find it. Uh, uh, Elodi says, Con- just congratulations to Chris. Love her recipes. It is very simple and reminds me of the fruit of my island pineapple and papaya fresh Aww. from our garden. Yeah, it looks delicious. And here's a question from Casey. Can you make pancakes out of that batter? I am told that you can um, because a lot of people here don't have waffle irons. So I've had that question a few times this week. <clears throat> I've been told that you can. Um, I have not done it, but it is part of the recipe. If you go to um, Vancouver with Love and you put in the oatmeal waffles recipe, her website, she does have, I don't even know if there's any modifications necessary. Um, I took her recipe uh, and, and did some modifications of my own. So her basic recipe is there, which is wonderful. But um, yeah, it pro- may have instructions on how to make uh, pancakes. Great. Um... We have a question from Edith. What is the best air fryer? I think the Breville. But... Uh-huh. Yeah, you know, it, it, I think it depends. I think it's really important to get a good quality. Like a Breville, I like my Philips. Um, I did a little bit of research before I bought that one. Um, but don't skimp because I think you'd regret it. It won't, it won't last as long. Uh, it may not give you the, the option. I mean, mine's pretty simple. It has a timer. You time the cooking. And it has the temperature dial and that's it. So, um, you know, that's, it, it depends on what you're gonna do in it, but I, I think just stick, stick with a high quality brand. Yep, and, and the is your pressure cooker an instant pot? No, I'm, that's the next thing I want because I have a pressure cooker my mother gave me and I never used it because I don't enjoy using it. And when I see there's so many instant pot recipes, I really, really wanna get an instant pot so I can follow exactly the settings that are required for that. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I have people who swear by their instant pots. So that would be probably the next thing I get. That's great. Well, thank you so much. This was a wonderful presentation and the recipe does not seem too difficult. No, no, simple ingredients, healthy, delicious, can't go wrong. Well, that is fantastic. Uh, do you know the graduate that's going to be on tomorrow? Her name is Nancy Travis. I don't. I looked at the list of, um, of your upcoming guests, and um, I know Naomi, but I don't know her personally, but I do know her. I mean, Victoria's been doing this for probably 10 years, so there's a lot of, a lot of graduates I don't know, but we do have a lovely Facebook group of all the alumni, and um, so I, you know, I do interact with a lot of them on, on that Facebook page. That is great. Well, it sounds like a wonderful program. She actually said yesterday, maybe she'd have me teach in it sometime. So I, I would. Oh, be that's a great idea. I know. Yeah, that my, bro- my, brother my brother spoke one, my brother spoke once uh, several years ago at one of her classes and um, he, he loved it. He had fun with that. So. Oh, who's, who's your brother? My, my brother is Eric Lindstrom. You may know him. He was, uh, he works for a farm animal rights movement now. He's the executive director and he was a skeptical vegan for a long time. Well, it sounds like maybe he needs to be on my show too. That's a great idea. I he think just you spoke got- at the veg test in um, Boston. I think you've got a lot of work to do to uh, get in touch <laughs> with all those guests that you. you I'm a you networker. Know. I can do it. I got that yeah. for you. Um, oh, here's a question. I, I don't, did you take the Ruby course? Mm-hmm. And Mary would like too. to, yeah, Mary would like to know if you could please comment on it. Yes, absolutely. I took the Forks Over Knives course most recently. And then before I left New York, I took the um, professional plant-based course. Um, there, it's, you know, people say, oh, it's an online school. Mm, it's tough. And you have to be committed to it, but it is amazing. You learn so much. You learn from fantastic instructors. And um, I highly recommend it. Uh, it's, I, I, took the, uh, I took the plant-based uh, professional one and it was like, I don't know, I think six months long. 
And then the Forks Over Knives one, which was just like three months long. And um, I was able to use some of my, my assignments. They, they let me use my assignments uh, in the next one if it was a, a, you know, a, a repeat. Um, but I really recommend that. Um, as far as cooking goes, that's, that's wonderful. Plus, you know, it's a really good credential to have if you ever want to uh, get a, a job as a, as a cook or, or start your own business or, you know, whatever. It's a good credential. But, you know, I always wondered, because having gone to culinary school, uh, so much of it is when the instructors taste your food. How can <laughs> they, how can they I know. You know, it tastes the way it's supposed to when it's virtual? I, I always wondered about it. Well, um, that's the one downside about doing it virtually. Um, but as far as presentation, as far as process, you had to do a mise en place. You had to take a picture of your mise en place and then send that to them. Then you had to do, you know, a process picture and an end product picture. And um, so they are really, uh, they keep up on you. They, you, don't, you don't slide on any of it. And yeah, you have no idea what it tastes like. They don't. But um, I guess they have to take it at your word, you know. Yeah, that's funny. I always wondered about that. Thank you so much. Well, get to work. Get me those guests. <laughs> I certainly will. Um, you know, normally every guest gets two free bottles of vinegar, but he won't ship out of the country. Do you ever get to the United States with a United States address? I do. I do. I, my sister is my mule. So I send things to her and then she, uh, I pick it up when I see her. So I'll be seeing her in August. <laughs> okay, then. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send you the normal email, but please put her address in because Thomas can't ship outside of the United States. Sounds good. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you so much. Very generous. You're welcome. Have you ever tasted those uh, flavored reduced balsamic vinegars? No, no that sounds fantastic, though. Well, you know, uh, I, you, I know that your waffles certainly don't need any maple syrup, but they're actually great, if, you know, instead of maple syrup, like because he has flavors like coconut and you could just do a little mm. drizzle. Yeah, we had a, a, it was very kind. We have a breakfast every Sunday morning with all of the expats. We had about know, 12 people this last week and it was one of their birthdays and his wife brought a chocolate cake. And, you know, as a vegan, you're like used to saying, okay, I won't have any, but she made it vegan. And <laughs> it was so sweet, but one of the ingredients she used in it was balsamic vinegar. And, uh, and I thought, now that you mentioned that, my goodness, the flavored balsamic would really be amazing. That is very interesting. Well, great. Well, this was a lot of fun, Chris. Thank you so much. You're welcome. My pleasure. Thank you. You're so welcome. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. If you're free at 2 p.m. today, hop on over to the Facebook page of Mastering Diabetes. I'll be interviewed by Cyrus Kambada. And please come back tomorrow as we continue with day three of Main Street Vegan Academy Week with another fabulous culinary demo from one of the graduates named Nancy Travis. Not the actress Nancy Travis, I don't think. And she's going to be making, among other things, a quinoa curry. Take care and take care, Chris. Thanks again. Thank you. Bye-bye.